I am Sandra Berkman, founder and CEO of the Passion Institute, and today I have Joshua Onisco with me, who's a dear friend and also the CEO and founder of Pandy Organics. Thank you so much for being here with me today, Joshua. Thank you for having me, of course. Mm-hmm. So initially, what I would love to is get your take on passion. What does passion mean to you in your life and in your work? You know, a lot of times I, I kind of explain passion as if you wake up one day and you have this burning urge to do something. But what's different about it than everything else you're doing is that I imagine that you're the only person on earth can do it and the world is counting on you to execute it. And it's not that that's reality, but that's the amount of gusto or intention that's going into what you're doing because if you have this idea that this is why you're here and there's no one that's gonna swoop in with a cape and do it for you, So you have to pay attention to what you're doing and have intention to every action that leads up to your your success and and being okay if something fails. Because to me, being an entrepreneur is someone who has the willingness to fail enough times to find success. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can get from point A to point B is having authentic passion in everything that you do. Mm -hmm. And I know you have led Pangea Organics with such passion and and integrity for the past now 15 years. Mm -hmm. Um, what led you to that path? Well, I, I kind of had a, um, a, a different upbringing where it was pretty obvious early on that I didn't fit into the classroom setting mm-hmm. and always finding ways to get out of school. And finally, when I was 15, uh, I left school and I worked lots of odd jobs, you know, in the United States. As soon as I turned 19, I started traveling and I think I've traveled to probably 40 or 50 different countries by now and seeing and understanding how the rest of the world lives gives you a very different perspective on how you should be living or how you want to be living and how you want to show up for your community, your world, your friends, um, in relationship. And in 2000, I had traveled um, quite extensively for several years. And I woke up one day and I said, you know, traveling was great, but if I want to actually make an impact in the world, I want to be able to use my gifts, which is creating, and in this case, it's creating skincare to help improve the livelihood of people in developing countries that are growing ingredients. I wanted to change the way that corporations think about creating packaging and how we just create things in general and kind of you know, be somewhat of a guiding light in our own small way of, hey, you don't have to always do things the way you've been doing them. And I always explain to people, the one great thing about capitalism is that people follow the dollar. Mm -hmm. They don't always follow trends. They don't follow, you know, what everyone else is doing. They follow the dollar. And if you can prove that you can create a sustainable, socially just product that works and people start buying it, the larger corporations will follow you and in that way you can change the way the world sees business. Mm. Yeah. So I I get that, you know, really that deep passion and inner drive, Mm -hmm. um, but still doing the same thing for 15 years, you know, how do you maintain that passionate connection with Pangea Organics and your vision? I think that, you know, part of it is authentic leadership and it's an ongoing learning you know there's there's no one day where you wake up and you're like i am the best leader on earth at least i don't think i ever will and i'm far from it now but every day i wake up and i i look back at you know whether it's the last 24 hours or the last seven weeks the last five years and i say what did i do right where could i have shown up better where could i have been more authentic where could i have made a better decision and how do i change that moving forward so it affects my path and everybody around me in a more positive way Mm -hmm. and so it never gets old for me i don't wake up and say i'm so burnt out on this because how can you be burnt out on something that you haven't perfected yet Mm. so seeing the growth and and yeah continued growth in the process and becoming the best you can be well that's you know that's it you know Mm -hmm. what i explain to a lot of people are starting businesses is it's easy to focus on growth in, you know, the finances and top line and bottom line, Mm -hmm. but it's harder to focus on growth in here, you know, to really look at how do you show up more authentically? How do you make more decisions that are better? So 
and, and that's such a great, you know, great topic to talk about leadership. And so what are some of the key skills that you see is really useful when you run a business? I don't know if you call Pandy Organics a, a conscious capitalist business, mm -hmm. but you know, that's a terminology so. that, that, that people can, more people can relate to. So what kind of leadership skills do you think are important? I think the first thing is having the wisdom to admit when you're wrong. I think that a lot of leaders fail when they feel like they need to know everything all the time. And people around you, just like in a relationship, know when you're not being authentic. And when you're not being authentic, people don't want to follow you as a leader. They want to go off and do their own thing. They don't want to be part of something that feels like it's all-knowing because that's a very boring world if one person knows everything. And I think a second thing is knowing that you, your job is to surround yourself with really intelligent people that are passionate as well, and you have to celebrate their passion. You can't try to overshadow them with your light. You have to allow them to shine through. Mm -hmm. Because when people have the, the space, when you allow them the space to shine, people can do amazing things. Mm -hmm. I think that over the past 15 years, I've seen people that I would have judged early on as someone who's not passionate or not driven but then when, when I saw them given the space, they turn into this other person. And maybe mm. no one gave that to them their entire life. Maybe they had a childhood where they were constantly overshadowed by a parent or a sibling. And then you have that opportunity to open up a completely different world for them. Mm. And that's the beautiful thing about business is it is community. It is family. And you do have the opportunity to improve someone's livelihood. Mm. Yeah. You know, so you touch on... If you're, you're talking about my questions before I get there, which is wonderful. We're on the same path here. So when you choose employees or vendors, collaborative partners, what do you look for? Truth. Truth. Yeah, you know, I mean, you, you have to have truth in any kind of relationship, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a personal relationship, a friendship, a business relationship. And I think that once you tune in and understand and call yourself on your own you know, BS, you can really start to understand where people's fears are coming in. And when there's fear, there's dishonesty. And when there's dishonesty, things don't work. The river doesn't run, mm -hmm. you know? And so what, I, what I've learned in the past several years about truth is it's a two-way street. It's easy to go and say, well, everyone has to be honest with me. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work because honesty has to come from both ways. And if you're not honest with yourself, you have a high probability of attracting people in your life that are not honest with themselves mm -hmm. and they're not going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. If you have integrity, the more integrity that you develop with yourself, the more that you're going to attract. Mm -hmm. It's the law of nature. Yeah. So truth. How do you test? I'm wondering. So here I am. There's and this it, little strip <laughs> that you use and it's green if no. Um, it's just gut. Okay. I think that... Um, you know, every once in a while when I'm, I get, you know, stuck on these nature programs, which I love and I love outer space exploration and deep sea and nature, but I feel like our culture has spent so much time trying to understand every single facet of life outwards and mm. spending so little time understanding this giant compass that we have beating in our chest mm. that will always tell you the truth if you listen to it. It'll always point you in the right direction if you listen to it. But we pretty much create an entire world to stop us from looking in. Mm -hmm. That's our culture, you know, and it's changing. And it's really amazing to see a culture that is starting to understand, oh my God, I was given this thing that wants to lead me in the right direction. It wants to show me where my passion is. It wants to show me and tell me that I know what I want out of this life. And the second we start listening to it, our whole world can open up. There's no more, I don't know what I want. I mean, how many times have you heard someone say, I don't know what I want? And I look at them and I said, that's bullshit. Of course you know what you want. The world would never rob you of you knowing what you want. You're robbing it of yourself. Mm -hmm. Just listen. It's all in here. Mm -hmm. So it, and it, it's so interesting, like you're saying, it's definitely opening up. Many more people are living and doing business this way, but it's definitely not at the tipping point yet. No, certainly... it's not even close to the tipping point. No, and I'm wondering, I mean, are we going to reach that point where oh, it's yeah, mainstream? Absolutely. Yeah? I mean, if we all decide that we have something to do with it, 
if we all, you know, intention predicts the outcome, plan accordingly. Mm. My intention is to live every moment towards a common goal that everyone on earth will know what their passion is, what their purpose is. Mm. It's, it's not that complicated. It's, it's a lot of it is just allowing people to space. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I see so many different ways that parents are raising their kids. And it's so often that parents will come up to me and start asking me, like, did your parents let you drop out of school? And, uh, you know, what was it like? And were you, you know, in and out of jail? <laughs> and like they have all these ideas that if we don't stick to the status quo, yeah. there's a storm ahead. Mm. But, you know, what I tell parents, I said, look, you made the decision to bring another life into this world. Do you want that life to live? Yeah. You know, it's my friend Tom said right before he left for India in 2000, get busy living or get busy dying. You know, and people are always saying, aren't you afraid you're going to die? Aren't you afraid you're going to, you know, fail? Aren't you? No, I'm afraid of not living and I'm afraid of not trying. I'm terrified of not trying. You know, the waking up and, and having so much fear that you don't try what yeah, you want to accomplish, is, yeah. it's the worst. Yeah. It's worse it's than not wearing a helmet on your motorcycle. <laughs> So it's interesting you've touched on failure and, and your perspective on that a couple of times and um, it's obviously being an entrepreneur you need to have a reframing of failure mm -hmm. in order to be able to be creative and, and try new things and innovation etc. Um, I would love to hear a little bit more about how you're embracing that so to speak fear of failure it sounds like it's more fear of not trying and how you came to that, you know, what you can share. Well, I think that if you ask anybody their greatest memories of their life, nine out of 10 times, a bunch of those memories will be a time of hardship, a time of failure. Mm -hmm. And their recounting of how they went from complex problems and failures to solutions, because we are the champion of that moment. Mm -hmm. You don't forget that. You don't forget when you worked your way through an issue whether it's in relationships, I mean, if I sat here and asked you questions about your last five relationships, I guarantee you could verbatim talk about the challenges and mm -hmm. what you learned from those challenges. You know, it's not always often, there was this one day we were in a park and it was a picnic and, you know, <laughs> Everything was perfect. and he brought me flowers. And I mean, we do remember those things, but they're not. And so when I look back at the last 20 years of my life, it's absolutely where things went sideways where there was the biggest challenge, where I was face to face with it. And it's again, no one's gonna swoop down in a cape and save you. You have to listen to your heart. You have to trust your gut and know that you have whatever it takes to find a solution. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to ask for help. It's absolutely okay. Mm -hmm. When you are in on your path and you're living with integrity, the world wants to help you. Mm -hmm. In fact, the entire universe is conspiring for you to succeed at any given moment, mm. the second you realize what you're doing is right. So have you had you know, instances where you just felt divinely guided, so to speak, or that the universe, so to speak, was helping you in that direction? Yeah, but it's not saying it's all in you. Mm. You are the universe. Mm. Okay. You know, your body is made up of stardust. Mm. <laughs> you know, so it's not that and I, it's us, it's this. It's right now, it's the present moment. It's understanding that there is no difference between me and that. Mm -hmm. It's all one. And the second you realize that you have that energy, that mm -hmm. power, that light of the universe inside of you, what can't you not accomplish? Yeah. Nothing. So meaning, because I know a lot of people have trouble asking for help. Yeah, yes. even I do yeah. sometimes. Well, and I okay. catch myself and I'm yeah, like, oh yeah. my God, what are you doing? The answers yeah. are all around you. Your community wants to help you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just this morning, I was like, I woke up with, you know, um, inner turmoil about something. And two of my closest friends, I just reached out to them because I know both of them always call me on my BS. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's one of the purest forms of love is having the mutual trust between two people where you trust that person telling you yeah. when you're not living in integrity. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I think I'm kind of at the end here, unless you have anything else to ask <laughs> and tell on passion. I just and think that, you know, I think that a lot of people say, I'm looking for my passion. There's no looking. Mm -hmm. It's feeling. 
Mm-hmm. You know what your passion is. Allow yourself that. It's one of the greatest gifts you can have in this life is just allowing yourself to live with your passion, for your passion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, there's what you talked about parenting and it, it, you touched on education system that you didn't fit into that. Mm-hmm. Um, I took another route. You know, I, I was the, the pleaser and the good student, right? <laughs> and I did everything they told me to do. But, you know, so there's also a where am I in that, you know, yeah. so that came a little bit later. But in terms of our education system and our culture, you know, it is changing, but we don't, you know, we, our kids are not in, in a school system that teaches this. Most parents, unfortunately, don't have the knowledge to, to bring that out in children either, you know, so, you know, it's the fewest people that walk that path. And I think the more do and the more we share these different messages and ways to do it the more people recognize okay this feels right to me too mm-hmm. um but i wonder is there you know an educational revolution or what what would help? well i think i mean what i see in the the younger kids you know the kids that are you know 16 to being born yesterday mm-hmm. is they're being born with kind of a different um tune in their radio Mm -hmm. you know they're tuned into something that i believe we have been creating as a culture Mm -hmm. you know i believe the universe has been creating this ability for people to come into this world with a higher sense of being Mm -hmm. and knowing that inevitably their job is to serve Mm -hmm. you know that's how when i wake up in the morning i'm like what's the purpose of life Mm -hmm. to serve i don't understand what else there would be we're Mm -hmm. here to serve our own intention. We're here to serve the better good of humanity, the better good of the planet, the the all inhabitants of it. My cat that's meowing here in the background. <laughs> she likes to be heard. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I feel like if you wake up like that, I don't know how you could be unhappy. Mm. You know, if you have the ability to wake up and serve the world. Yeah, amazing. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> Make well, the world a sandwich. <laughs> Make the world a sandwich with organic ingredients. With all organic, yeah. gluten-free bread. <laughs> well, Joshua, thank you so much. For no, thank you. Thanks for putting wisdom. this together.